I now recognize the Ambassador and Permanent Representative of Montenegro, speaking on behalf of Montenegro and Slovenia. Ambassador, you have the floor. Thank you very much, my dear friend. Nice to see you in New Year, also on your distinguished position. And I wish to uh, also express uh, Happy New Year to you, both co-chairs and uh, all here colleagues. Uh, I'm sure very important and challenging uh, New Year. And especially I would like to congratulate you to all my Orthodox brothers celebrating according to old calendar Christmas. Happy Christmas tomorrow. And uh, we are working in, uh, in, uh, in this atmosphere even for our great holiday, what means that we appreciate very much our task and job in this uh, open working group. I have the honor to speak on behalf of Montenegro and Slovenia. We align ourselves with the European Union statement. Cities are an important engine for economic growth and socio-economic development. By 2030, about 60% of the global population will live in cities, while the amount of the land used for cities will be doubled. Yet the urban areas are already overcrowded and particularly in developing countries suffer from deficiencies of clean water, electricity and other resources essential to the support of their populations and economies. The lack of access to basic services and livelihood leads to increasing risk of discrimination, social exclusion and ultimately violence and further roots people in poverty. In order to contribute to the eradication of poverty, access to decent employment opportunities and adequate social protection system in cities should be provided. In designing appropriate policies, including on addressing inequalities on, and crime, emphasizes should be put on the protection of women, children and youth, as well as stigmatized groups who face particular risk in this regard. We believe that uh, urban development policies must be people-centered and holistic, addressing different and specific challenges of urban sustainable development. While planned urbanization invites positive change in the multidimensional society, namely maximizing human development and well-being and uh, minimizing environmental impact, unplanned urbanization is uh, rightly viewed as a negative trend that brings about atrocious consequences affecting every aspect of the society. Unplanned urbanization and settlements have negative effects on the health, access to sanitation, security, housing and migration, as well as, 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 well as vulnerable agricultural land and ecosystems. It can result in overconsumption and inefficiency when resources are limited and should be used effectively. A new agenda for urban planning is necessary in ensuring that cities not only become resource efficient and low carbon emitting, but go beyond that and positively enhance the ecosystems which provide them with goods and services. Urban areas should be transformed into regenerative cities that reduce their dependency of fossil fuels, boost and de deployment of renewable energy, reintroduce water into the hydrological cycle and make sewage re reprocessing and nutrition capture central to urban waste management. Transforming, transforming urban infrastructure into regenerative systems consequently requires an integrated approach, coordinated action and policy dialogue. Sustainable urban development requires cooperation of public, private and civil society spheres in a multi-stakeholder participatory process, a multi-sectoral approach among authorities as well as uh, regional and global networks of cities, enabling businesses to invest in future just and sustainable technology has critical role. Agglomeration requires that sustainable transportation system be built. In our view, transport is without doubt a social, economic and environmental issue, which can make key contribution to the sustainable development. As such, it should be taken into, in, into consideration in elaborating the future UN post-2015 development agenda. Achieving sustainable urban and rural accessibility is a vital step in the overall improvement of the urban and rural environment and maintenance of economic viability of cities and rural areas. Meeting environmental and transport objectives requires integrated approaches 
combining transport, environmental and spatial planning. Achieving sustainable urban and rural accessibility requires the development of sustainability goals and indicators, target setting and monitoring, along with policies aimed at improving accessibility and not simply movement. Interconnections of accessibility, economic development and environmental objectives should be the primary objective of transport policies. An integrated multimodal transport system with the inclusion of safe and, in, uh, and attractive facilities for cycling and walking is required. This system needs to be safe, accessible and affordable to everyone as well as energy efficient in order to reduce greenhouse gas emission and air pollution. In this endeavor, cooperation between governments with all relevant stakeholders namely private sector and civil society, is of crucial importance. Allow me to point out our position that SDGs should be formulated through human rights-based approach. As we have stressed already at previous sessions, that respect for human rights is an important prerequisite for achieving sustainable development. Before I conclude, I would like to recall our general position towards the elaboration of SDGs that should be evidence-based and have measurable qualitative and quantitative indicators that will help to ensure full implementation of the visions we are certain we will create it together in this process. We are looking forward to hear propositions on possible approaches for interactive debate, other member states and stakeholders. And least, but last but not least, I would like to, to commend our distinguished panelists and thank you for their valuable, thoughtful uh, contribution. I am thank you. I thank the Ambassador and Permanent Representative of Montenegro for his statement speaking on behalf of Montenegro and Slovenia.